Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori and I am a reseller on the Poshmark app and eBay. I sell clothing items um, that I pick up at thrift stores, at estate sales, yard sales, rummage sales, the Goodwill outlets, all that fun stuff. And I clean them up, make them beautiful and sell them. So today I am touching on some strategies on how to best tackle the estate sale. Um, which is a relatively new thing for me. Um, I guess in the past, I always pictured estate sales being something, um, you know, these big gorgeous homes that have lots of antiques and furniture and ornate things that um, either were out of my budget or not my style or whatnot. Um, but what I've learned about estate sales is if you do a little research, um, you can find estate sales that are tailored just to your needs, which for me, I am always on the hunt for um, clothing, fashion accessories, shoes, belts, some jewelry. Um, and in today's haul, I'm going to show you something that I purchased outside of my comfort zone that I think is really going to have a great payoff. So, um, I decided that I wanted to share my tips um, and what I do when I go to estate sales to hopefully help you um, for your next estate sale excursion. So the number one thing, um, the first place that I started when it came to estate sales was, um, oh, I also wanted to tell you, I have a haul from an estate sale. So I think I'm going to go through my top 10 tips. Um, I'm going to try to go through them relatively quickly. Then I'm going to do the haul and you'll be able to see, um, you know, the strategies that I put into place and the things that I purchased. So um, if you're interested in the strategies, then that'll be the next, you know, maybe 10 minutes of the video. And if you want to just see the haul, I will post down below where to fast forward to, and then you can just start the video at the hall if you're not interested in my strategies. But if you are interested, First here goes. thing that I always do when I am interested in going estate sales shopping in the upcoming weekend or upcoming weeks is I look online to a website called estatesale.net. Um, this is a site that you can go to and plug in your zip code and up will pop any estate sales that are happening in the upcoming weeks and you'll be able to click on the individual estate sales and view the things that will be available at that particular estate sale. Now they don't always give a ton of details. Um, you really just have to go based on the picture. Sometimes they label them. Sometimes you're just clicking through several pictures. But I like to look ahead of time to see which ones that I would be interested in. You know, the ones that are, that have clothing. Sometimes like I try to peek in and see if there's any designer brands in the photos, like I enlarge them. I also, um, as some of you may know, I worked at American Girl for 10 years and I kind of have a thing for American Girl dolls. So I'm always poking around to see if there are any dolls or um, some older pieces from that. But primarily I'm looking for clothes, handbags, shoes, jewelry, etc. Um, so I look online and then I kind of, the next thing that I'll do is plan my course of action. So in some cases, you may want to go two days in a row. Um, the first day, you're not going to get as good of deals as you do on the second day. So um, if anybody was following um, the vintage Gucci bag that I purchased a couple weeks ago, I think it was a Mother's Day weekend. I went on the first day. And I picked up only the items that I felt like I couldn't live without. Um, and it was I was very selective because the prices were pretty high on the first day. But then when I went back the second day, it was like a completely different sale. I went after two o'clock, the sale was ending at three. I had one hour and the workers were tired and they were like ready to shut it down. So I got some really good prices doing that. So if you're trying to keep your cost of goods down, Maybe even go on the first day and just research and then go back the second day, knowing full well that some of the pieces you may have your heart set on will not be there the second day. That's why if something is there that you really love on day one, you could try to negotiate with the staff um, and pick it up and then go back on day two and just pick up the things um, you know that are great prices. So for me, I really try to keep my cost of goods under five dollars per item. Um, you know, I do shop at the Goodwill outlets a lot, but with estate sales, you have to things are a little more expensive. So, um, so go to estatesale.net. That's number one. 
Number two, do your reviewing ahead of time. Check out the estate sales, see if they have inventory that you're interested in. Number three, try to go two days if possible, knowing that your best deals are on the second day. And I actually had end of day, second day as number four as the tip for, um, to me, that is the best time to go. They are ready to go. It's been a long weekend. Um, the people who run these estate sales, um, you know, they've probably invested two 10 hour days into these estate sales. So by day two, when there's an hour left and they're looking at everything, which typically gets donated at the end. So that's a really good thing to find out um, is if the things, what's happening to these items after the sale, are they being donated? If that's the case, they will be very generous by the end. So um, number five, I, I, I am not like an order person. So I forgive me if I'm kind of scattery here and I'll probably go back to numbers and revisit. But number five is just my thrifting thing in general is just buy what you love. Um, Sometimes people give me things to sell and they could be great items, but if I'm not excited to sell them, they sit in my death pile for a very long time. When I buy things that excite me from a fashion standpoint or things that I think are going to sell very well, um, I list them faster because I'm excited about them. So buy what you love is always in my list of thrifting tips. Um, look over things carefully I have as number six. So the beauty of an estate sale is you're in somebody's home. There are usually couches. There's a whole house of, you know, places where you can hunker down and go through things. This is difficult sometimes when you're in a thrift store, you just have a carriage, the lighting isn't great, there's hustle and bustle around you. On day two, for me, it's been a little bit on the more quiet side because I'm not there at like 8 a.m., which could be a tip too. Get there early if there's something you want, get in line, get your number, um, and beeline to whatever it is you're interested in getting. Right when you walk through the door, you can ask people, where should I go? I want clothes. Usually clothes are upstairs. You know, kitchen items are in the kitchen. I find that the basements are always a really interesting place with a hodgepodge of things. I found some really fun things in basements. But yeah, that's that's a thing that you can um, implement too. If there's something you really have your heart set on, you got to get there early um, because there are a lot of other people viewing the same website as you are viewing. But where was I? See, I've already lost my place. Oh, look things over carefully. So what I did um, when I had my pile of clothes is I just sat down on the couch and I literally went through things one by one. And I really took my time. I'm trying to get more and more selective about what I purchase. And also, when you're looking things over, it's a really good time to do some research. You can sit there with your phone. You can look up um, what things have sold for. I made a decision to put back a lot of things based on that when I was actually sitting down and just looking through. Um, so I, I, you can't overstress. And you'll see in my haul on the second half of this video um, that even with looking over things really carefully, I think there were two items that I got home and I was like, darn it, how did I miss that? <laughs> um, my next tip, I think, is number nine. So take your time as seven. This is kind of bad. I think I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing on this video because I'm used to just doing hauls where I just like plow through things and I'm not a very orderly person. And this, when I give 10 tips, I'm supposed to go in order. See my notes? They're all over the place. But anyways, um, so I had buy what you love, look things over carefully, in number seven and eight, these kind of all go together, six, seven, and eight. Look things over carefully. Seven is take your time, which kind of goes hand in hand. Um, even when you're going through the racks, just take your time. Make sure you're finding pieces you love. And then do your research. On site, you can do it. You can look up what things cost right there. Number nine, by nine. far, um, the most important step in the whole process of shopping at estate sales. And that would be to observe and be kind to the staff. Take some time when you first arrive to figure out who's who. There's usually a head honcho at the estate sale who makes the final decisions on things. Um, and typically, um, in my experience, on day two, after a certain hour, the items are half off. Now, I found that many of the items I purchased went anywhere from 50 to 80, 90% off, depending on the person I was speaking to, 
the time of day, how much time was left in the sale. So there really is a ton of wiggle room for negotiation on that second day. So to be kind is going to work so much to your advantage. Um, I always walk around with a smile on my face in a calm manner. Um, I also let them know that I'm serious about buying. Uh, so what has the setup, if for those of you who haven't been to estate sales, the setup and the ones that I have been to have been, you know, you have, you have someone who's a cashier, like in like whatever room at the front of the house when you walk in. And then you have people stationed throughout the house who are kind of in charge of their territory. So someone may be in charge of all like the dishes in the kitchen and, and they're going to give you pricing on um, those pieces. There are people upstairs in the basement. You know, they may have like five to 10 workers in a house, depending on the size of the house and the sale. Um, so when you go to a room, so I usually go right upstairs because that's usually where the clothing is kept in the bedrooms. And there's a person who is working there. And as you're looking, um, if you say, um, you know, I'm interested in these items, there are always prices posted on the wall. So, you know, shirts, $9, pants, whatever. They'll go through the whole list of items. Um, but on day two, when it's half off, you're going to have some wiggle room. So what I do is um, I discuss with the person there the things that I'm thinking about buying. So I'll bring them a pile of things and she may say, okay, well, the shirts are $5, but say I have four shirts and now today they're half off. So $250, $250, $250, so $750. And then she'll say, how about $6? And I'll say, well, can you do five? And she'll say, okay, five. And she'll write shirts, $5. And there's kind of this back and forth. Um, so what happened at the estate sale that I just recently went to, sorry, my battery is low. Um, what happened at the estate sale that I recently went to was I got my first pile on day two. Things were half off. Pricing was already pretty good. And I went downstairs and my arms were getting full. So I wanted to set things down and kind of start a pile. So the woman in charge said, talk to so-and-so, talk to Joe, some guy, and he's going to give you some pricing. And as he was going through the prices with me, I was feeling like, ooh, he's not giving me a lot of wiggle room. So there was, there was one piece. It was actually this jacket right here. This is a blank NYC, like blush colored um, moto jacket. And they had this marked $24. So it was $12. And I didn't want to pay $12 for it. I wanted to pay, you know, well under like maybe $10 or $8 for that. So I put that on the bottom and the guy started to go through and give me prices on everything that I had in the pile. And then when he got to that, he's like, uh, you know, $12 for that because today is half off. I'm like, can you do any better than $12? And he's like, uh, and I said, you know what? I'm not even sure I'm going to get this, but I'm going to leave it there. So I left it with my pile. He gave me my card with the pricing for just a few items because I wanted to test the waters with this guy. So he gave me some numbers and then I went back upstairs and now I'm killing more time. And now we're getting closer to the time where they're going to start really lowering the prices. Um, so this is all coming under the category in case you've lost me from chatting of being kind to the staff. So then um, I went back upstairs. I found a few more items. And then um, I was kind of waiting for that guy to leave because I thought he was pricing things a little bit high considering the, the house was full of objects and the sale was ending in an hour and a half. So I went back down with some other items later and the woman who was running it was now the cashier. So I went up to her with my new items and I said, I'm adding these, this is my card. And then she said, go talk to so-and-so, they're doing the pricing. So she still wasn't giving pricing at this point. So then I went to a new guy and he was just a lot more generous. Like I had three shirts and he's like, how about $3 for the, I said, and I thought he meant each. And he's like, no, 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 $3 for all three shirts. I'm like, great. So we went through the whole list with that gentleman and he was just way easier on me. And I was so happy. So at that point, um, I started adding more things. So one of the things that I want to show you, um, so I guess I'm starting my haul a little bit early, was this, um, it's very dusty, this um, vintage Bogner ski suit. So this, it's a size eight, it's in beautiful condition, made in the USA, 
full size ski suit. Um, I did quickly some comps on Bogner, um, and I saw that a lot of them were selling between like seventy five and two hundred dollars. I'm like, wow, this is a good piece, but it didn't have a price on it. So at the end of all my negotiations with this guy, I said, what about um, what about this? I said, there's no price. He's like, oh, we had that priced at a hundred dollars, and I was like, oh, okay. I said, I that that I really truly didn't see that coming. Um, I said, okay. Um, that's actually out of my budget. He's like, well, it's half off. It's 50. I said, I know that's still not what I'm looking for. And he said, um, well, what were you, what were you looking to spend on it? And I said, I mean, honestly, I said, I don't know, like 10 ish. He's like, Ooh, 10 is pretty low. And I said, I totally understand. Like be respectful. I mean, they, this is the prices they set them at. So I was like, I, I understand. I'm fine with that. And then I picked up the, the moto jacket and I said, I was curious about this too. And um, he's like, what about 20 for the, the Bogner? And I said, well, I've been on the fence about this pink jacket, this blush moto jacket. And I said, how about $20 for the two of them? And he said, all right, do it. And I was pumped because, you know, the, the jacket was marked $24 and apparently the ski suit was marked a hundred. So $124, even half off would have been $62. And I got those two items for $20. And I really think it's, I was patient. I was respectful. Um, I was smart because I paused when I felt like the other guy was just too expensive. Um, and I was really happy with that. So all in, um, I think I spent 85, $86 on all of the items in my haul. And I think it came out to about $4 per item. Yeah, $85. Um, but then at the very end, my last tip is um, take some risks or try to go outside of your comfort zone if you ever have a good feeling about something. Um, and I say this all the time when you're at the Goodwill outlets because the pricing is so inexpensive there that you can take some risks. And I've been trying to branch out a little bit just, just to learn more about what's out there, learn the value of things. I find the research fascinating. It's one of my favorite aspects of reselling. Um, so probably the best piece in my haul um, which I'll do the haul after this, but I'm going to start, I'm going to show you this piece. So I had checked out $85 um, and I saw this one item on my way out. I'm like, that's really pretty. Um, and it was a lamp and it was marked $45. And it was just very neutral, uh, mid-century modern, like, but also felt like it could be in a farmhouse. Like I just loved it. And um, it was $45. So it was $22.50. And um, let me just check that price. I want to make sure I have that right. Oh, it was $48. So it was $24. And um, I actually, my hands were so full. I had purchased all these items of clothing. So I went out to my car. My dog's scratching on the rug. I'm sorry. Um, and I went up to my car and then I'm like, should I get the lamp? Should I not get the lamp? But I was going back and forth and they just said, you know, there's an artist mark on the lamp, which meant nothing to me because even though I watched the crazy lamp lady, if you don't watch her, she's beautiful, she's spunky and she's so much fun to watch. I could watch her pick grass and be entertained because she's so cute. Um, but she does know her stuff about lamps, which were never on my radar. But because I watched the crazy lamp lady, I sometimes peek at them now. So they said there's an artist mark. And I was like, ooh, artist mark. I have no idea. So I see the artist mark. They don't know who the artist mark is. I'm like, okay. Um, so I left. I brought my stuff out to the car. And as I'm walking to the car, I'm like, I would pay $30 for a lamp at Target. This lamp is beautiful. Um, what am I hemming and hawing over? Just go buy it. It's $24. So I did. So I went back and here's my lamp. I hope you like it as much as I do, <laughs> but it's just got all these neutral colors. It's kind of like the speckled ceramic. It's got this, this is one of the things that showed me that it might be something special is it had this like teak wood right here. And then the finial was kind of cool, um, but it didn't necessarily go. I'm actually not sure if this matches um, the rest of it because the rest of it is like brassy but I'm not sure. But anyways, um, it was in really beautiful shape. And then sure enough, there was, this was the artist mark in the back, which honestly, 
I got it home and I'm like, well, it's a good thing I like this because I'm not going to be able to sell this because I have no idea what that says. It looks like scribble. The only thing that I could make out was a cap, whoops, excuse me, was an M, like a cursive M. So I researched and researched all afternoon. I was like, you know, artist Mark Lamp um, went through and um, couldn't find anything. And then finally, <laughs> um, I found these, these websites and whatnot. And I discovered through my research that that was a Martz, M-A-R-T-Z lamp, mid-century modern lamp. Um, and the comps are crazy. <laughs> so popular items for Martz lamps, teaks. So this pair of lamps, now again, these are what they're selling for. But this pair of lamps, I don't know if you can see, is selling for $2,750. It's a rare find. Um, this is on Etsy. So I need to find some sold pricing. Um, these are just the base of Martz 1960 Vintage Jane and Gordon Martz of Marshall Studios Teak Ceramic Lamps. This is... 1950 for the base of these two. My point is, <laughs> I really think that I got a gem here because absolutely everything that I've looked at, um, Mart's Lamp on eBay, um, $4.99 with 11 people watching for just the base, $4.99. Um, these two are listed for $8.50, $5.50, $1.50, $3.45. Anyway, I think it's well over three or $400 and I'm really excited. I don't know if I'll sell it because I actually really love it. Um, but the woman was great. It was the end of the sale. It was half off and um, I didn't even negotiate that one because it was beautiful. I just took it and left and I'm super excited. And I may even tag the crazy lamp lady because I want her feedback on my lamp. All right, that's it. Those are my tips for estate sales. Now I'm gonna go through the haul so um, you can see the things that I picked up and, um, and as I'm going through, I can talk about strategies, um, some of my estate sale strategies that I used while I was shopping. All right, so let's get into the haul. Okay, so I've already showed you the blank NYC moto jacket. Um, I believe I have that listed for 50 or $60. The Bogner jacket I haven't listed yet. I wanna have it cleaned first. Um, and I may wait to list that more towards um, the winter season. Um, but I really think that's going to go for over $100. Um, so it's some of the other things that I picked up. Um, I got some Lululemon leggings. And again, this was the end of the day on the second day. So I'm sure there were much nicer things the day before. But they did not get the pricing that I got. So... Um, I think they quoted me $2 on these, um, and they're not great. They're cropped. There's a little crack. I think I have these listed for like $35 or $40 online, but can't say no to Lulu. Um, I got these ASOS shoes, which I thought were really pretty. I've never picked up this brand before. I've never come across it, but, um, nice wooden, um, there's a little mark here, but the leather is in really good shape. They're a size nine. Um, they're in great shape and they were very substantial. And I think these were about four, maybe five dollars. Um, this is a new label to me. Um, anytime denim has made in the USA, I'm willing to grab it. And where the jeans were four dollars. And I think by the end of the sale, by the time I was talking to the second guy, I think I got three or four pairs of jeans. They, they were even less. But this is called Just Black. These jeans are like a skinny jean, size 26. Just some like little variation in the wash there. Um, most of these jeans will go between like $30 and $40, um, except I did get, which I was pumped about, I got a pair of mother jeans. I've had a lot of success with mother jeans. These definitely look like an older. Um, you can always tell there's like an M on the pants from mother. Um, and this, I, this has to be just an older tag. This woman had a lot of like boot cuts, boot cuts things that I didn't get. Um, and I think she had daughters um, because there was like the main bedroom, 
and there's a lot of professional clothing. And then, um, you know, some of the more youthful stuff was in a different room. So this, this is weird because this doesn't say anything. It's just, oh, maybe I, maybe it is in there or you can barely see it that it says mother on this tag. But anyways, these are up. I think I have these listed for 78, but I'll probably land somewhere around $50 for those. This is my first time picking this up for men. Um, this is a John Varvados USA. This is just a wool blend sweater. Um, and I liked this because it had like this little stud detail in the shoulders. This is a men's size large. I just thought that was a really nice um, basic sweater. Uh, this is one of the items that I got home and saw that there were issues with it. This, um, I bought these jeans before, um, but I've never found um, a current Elliott shirt. Um, but I liked the buttons had like the current Elliott, just really substantial buttons. Um, this is a size one, it's vanity sizing, but there's the tag for current Elliott. So I noticed in there that there was like this little mark, but that didn't bother me. Um, and then I got home and I washed it. And when I went to film it, I found that giant yellow stain on the bottom. I don't know how I missed this huge stain. But what I think I'm going to do with this, just because I have nothing to lose, it's going to end up getting donated, is I think I'm going to DIY and crop it like right here and then just kind of try to fray the edges. I think that would actually be really cute. Um, so anytime you find something that you thought was in good shape and then you find problems with it, don't be afraid to DIY and try to make something good of it, um, of the error. So we'll see how that goes. But, um, you know, maybe I'll list for $25 with the DIY. I don't know. We'll see. Um, athletic stuff at these estate sales has tended to be very affordable. And I found these two Athleta short sleeved stretchy shirts. This is kind of like a classic Athleta with the ruched in the front, pretty long. This is the old Athleta tag, um, but they're actually in very good shape and they are both um, size small. So my intention is to lot these together. I haven't photographed them yet, but I'll probably lot them together and list them at like maybe $45 and take offers on Poshmark for that. This top I picked up mostly on style, although this has gotten a lot of attention because I happened to find, this is just American apparel, um, but it's um, like a pale, like a cream and gold off the shoulders, just a really pretty top. Um, but there were images of Kourtney Kardashian in this all over the internet when I was researching this. So, and then an actual really pretty stock photo that I was able to use. So that's gotten a lot of attention. Um, I think I have that at $35, which is high for American apparel. Um, but I think with the little celebrity images and stuff like that, I figured I'd list a little higher and see. I got this um, Kate Spade. I've been, you know, Kate hasn't been doing so great for me. Nobody seems to want to pay a lot of money. So I try to get pieces that are really unique. Um, and this has these ginormous beads that are really cute. And they're brown and cream and black. And they're just around the corner, uh, the collar. And it's just like a simple, um, it's a small cardigan. I just thought that was really cute. Um, there's that. This was my first time finding Diane von Furstenberg and I was really excited. Um, this is the Wanda dress. So this I wasn't sure about. This is one of the dresses that I actually sat down and did comps on right while I was shopping. Um, and this was a really strange thing. I don't know if this is a Diane von Furstenberg thing, but her tag is upside down. See so, you know, it's upside down and then it says size eight. So that was a little bit of a red flag to me because I was like, ooh, I wonder if this is a knockoff. But I mean, every detail, the thing with this Wanda dress is it has this full zip in the back. Um, and these were listed everywhere online. And this, there was nothing that's fully lined. It's really beautiful. But the thing with Diane von Furstenberg that you can find is on some of her newer pieces. She has the, um, the hologram, you know, that says that it's authentic and it's like a little iridescent shimmer. So it had all the right info. It had the Wanda tag. So it's legit. But anyways, the tag was upside down. So I don't know. I noted that in my listing. And I think I have this listed in the $70 range. Um, this skirt I picked up. Did not know this brand. 
it was somewhere buried in my subconscious, but um, I picked this brand up just based on style um, and feel of the fabric. Um, it's just this gorgeous classic black skirt. I can just picture this with like a fitted top. Are there pockets? No pockets, but just interesting pleating and it's a Zach Posen. So I've never found this before, but the comps on it were definitely very good. And when I looked at the care tag, it's 100% silk. So this kind of gets back to my tip, um, buy what you love and kind of trust your gut. Like I just had a good feeling about this. I didn't even look to see the, um, the fabric content and the fact that it was 100% silk was really good. And I was able to look up some comps. So um, 40 to $60 for this I'm hoping to get. Um, what else do we have here? So I got these page jeans. When I first grabbed them, they just said 32. So, um, I'm like, oh, that's a nice, like a little bit of a larger size. Nice. I loved the dark wash that I find to be very flattering. Um, the tag looked like to be a newer one, but what I didn't realize is that these were men's jeans. Um, and now that I think about it, most of the page tags for women I believe are white. Am I blanking? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like they're mostly like this. Anyways, I got home. This is the Normandy cut and this is a men's jean. And the comps were actually better on the men's jeans than they typically are for women. It's just kind of a straight cut. Um, really great condition. I'll probably list these like $40 or $50. Um, and as you know, I tend to price a little high on Poshmark and take offers. Um, you just never know what you're going to get. Um, oh, this shirt, I actually bagged this up because I photographed it. I was really excited about this. This was in the daughter's room. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of it. It's just a free people um, camisole, but I thought it was really pretty. Um, and it has like a little lace detail at the bottom. It's called the Intimately, it's the Intimately Free People Swinging Sequence Surplus Cami. <laughs> so that's what is in here, ready to go. Um, What else? What else? What else? I'm actually not sure if I got this. I think I got this last week. I think I showed this in last week's haul, the Mahi Cape. I think this is Maje, M-A-J-E. These comps are beautiful on this. Forgive me that I'm looking down at my notes here, but I think this might have been from last week. Um, this was not from last week, though. This I picked up. This is like hanging on my steamer. Um, and robes, robes were, it's my steamer. Robes were marked for $6. Um, and so this was $3 on day two. And it is a men's Brooks Brothers navy blue like velvety soft incredible condition robe that i paid three dollars for and the comps on those ro robes go anywhere between 40 and 75 dollars i was shocked that the comps were so good on that um but anyways i was excited to get that for three dollars this was an unbranded skirt and this was downstairs in the house um and i just loved it there's no there's no tag and I'm so upset because I feel like this has to be something special. It's just gorgeous. It's all crocheted all the way down. Very bohemian. It's just like an elastic waist, no zippers, but there's just no information on the inside. If anybody recognizes this um, design, please comment below and let me know. But it, it's so underneath the liner doesn't go all the way down. The liner goes to about here and then it's sheer the, west, the rest of the way. But I'm obsessed with this skirt and um, I would love to have somebody model this with like maybe just like a fitted top or something. It's just beautiful. The condition is gorgeous. Um, so there's that skirt. Um, these PJs, oh, I got just these cotton PJs and they're they just came out of the dryer and they're so wrinkled and I don't think I'm going to get much for them, but they looked very comfy. They're just Donna Karen. Um, and I think I paid $2 for this sleepwear. It's like a top and bottom, um, like button down, almost like a men's style, but it's a size small and really cute. Um, I think that might be the end. One more thing. What are these? These jeans are also a new brand to me. Um, they're called James jeans. Let me see. James jeans. 
Um, and these are just really nice. They just have some distressing. They're a little torn up. There was a little mark of, that I noticed. I'm in the lights. This is this is my backdrop for what I film my um, what I take my pictures on. And I decided to do this haul video downstairs um, as opposed to upstairs, where I usually do it in my living room area, um, just because I have all my inventory down here. So I figured I would start down here, but. You can see this little mark right here. So that's definitely gonna take some value off. So even though one of my tips is to check your things over carefully, sometimes it's just inevitable that you're gonna miss something until you're under these big lights. It's very hard to catch everything. Um, and that's just the nature of thrifting and what happens. So um, that's it. That is my estate sale haul. Um, in the end at that haul, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three. Twenty-three items for eighty-five dollars. Um, so I was really happy with that. I don't know that I showcased everything. I think there was like a Nike cinch bag and maybe something else that um my daughter ended up taking or something like that. But anyways, that was my haul. Those are my tips. I encourage you to get out to the estate sales, make the most of them, ask questions, be kind to staff, do your research, um, and have a wonderful time. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please do um, leave me a thumbs up. It really lets me know that you're enjoying my content. Leave me a comment below if you'd like to see more strategy videos and what works for me um, in my reselling business. But I really appreciate each and every one of you who comes and watches my videos. So thank you so much. And feel free to hit the subscribe button as well. Um, I have a little time off from my nannying job, which I typically do two days a week. Um, the family's traveling. So I am going to work my part-time reselling business more like a full-timer over the first half of the month of June. So um, I'm expecting to put out more videos for you. So thanks again for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Make it a great day. Bye.